Hi, and welcome to the morning meeting. I am your host, Julio Briones, and this is your 10 minute home care training. Before we get started on today's video, let's go through some of the formalities here. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you watching us. And if you are returning, we appreciate you as well. Uh, without the support of the viewers of this channel, we would have no reason to make videos and you know, that's pretty much how it goes. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Also, you know, share this video with, with your friends. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's other people out there that are looking for help with their home care agencies and give this video a thumbs up so that it really helps with all the YouTube algorithm stuff. And because of course, the more people watch, the more reason we have to make more videos. Also, uh, if there's any particular topic that you want us to discuss in a video, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. We also, uh, we publish videos every Tuesday and Thursday, and we do every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, weather permitting. Uh, we do a live video, uh, Ask the Home Care Expert. Uh, there'll be links for how to submit questions ahead of time in the description below. Speaking of comments and videos, today's, uh, today's video is actually going to be um, dealing with a question that a viewer asked in one of the comments. You know, so Crafty Nurse, if you're watching, thank you so much for submitting the comment. And she asked, um, can you make a video regarding systems and dealing with call-offs. Well, systems we actually discussed in our Ask the Home Care Expert uh, live Q&A on Wednesday. And the, you know, so we're gonna discuss call-offs in this video. At the time of this recording, we are expecting some pretty nasty weather in the Northeast of the United States. There's expected to you know, drop about two feet of snow where I live in particular. And that means that the home care agencies in my area are probably experiencing a lot of call-offs. Call-offs will happen. And as much as people want me to come up with some magic formula and tell you all that here's how you wave your wand and magically get rid of them, it's not gonna happen. They're gonna happen. We are in an industry that relies on people and the people that we rely on for staff sometimes are highly, highly unreliable. Especially if we are in the private pay sector, the statistics are that we're gonna interview about a hundred people and um, you know maybe hire about 10% of those or that we're gonna keep them long-term. You know, we're really gonna hire uh, you know, three to 10%, but that's how it goes. We actually did this in our top five minutes. I'll link that video up above if you missed that on uh, earlier this week. But as I just said, call-offs happen. And dealing with the call-off is much more important than actually preventing it. How do you prepare? You know, uh, those of you that have been watching this video for a while or that know me, um, because we've worked together as you know, if you're one of my clients, you'll know that our company philosophy is prepare, plan and rebuild. So, you know, that is really our focus. That is the focus to our methods. And that is everything that we concentrate on. So being prepared and having a plan in place are going to be the best, the best ways to combat call-offs. So let's, let's go over it like this. Okay, so number one, you have to make sure the your scheduling staff, whoever's doing your schedules, your coordinators, whatever, the, the field supervisors, whoever is scheduling your caregivers, they have to be trained. That is going to be the number one thing. Because if they are not trained on how to speak to the cord to the uh, caregivers and how to prevent them from being able to call out without notice, then that is gonna be a major issue for you, especially if you do a live on-call after hours. 
All right. The, the fact is that your coordinator staff, whoever is your schedulers are, they have to know what your expectation is. So this way they can pass it along to the caregivers as they're getting hired or as they're speaking to them. They, they should give you two hours notice unless it's like a true emergency. You should have two hours notice. If you if they are calling out with less than two hours notice, you're potentially going to lose billable hours. Because I'll, I'm going to tell you, that's really rule number one for me. You want you don't want to give up those billable hours. You know, you, you can lose as much as 20% of your revenue annually just from call offs. And the best way to combat that is to not lose them in the first place. So two hours notice is generally enough time for you to find a replacement. So I'm going to walk you through. I'm the coordinator, caregiver calls out. They've given me two hours notice. The very first thing that I'm going to do is call the client. Hey, Mr. Jones, Mrs. Smith, whoever. Yeah, this is, this is Julio from XYZ agency. Look, um, right now uh, I have, unfortunately, you know, Jane, your caregiver, is having some, some issues and is unable to make it in for her shift. I'm going to find you a replacement that may be a few minutes late. Is that okay with you? Now, let's stop there for a moment. Why did I specifically use those words and why did I phrase my conversation with the client in that particular way? The short answer is because we don't wanna lose the billable hours. See, typically, and this is what I have found working with coordinators over the years. When someone calls the client, when your schedules call the client, and I've seen owners do this and experienced and seasoned people do this too. All right, what they will generally do is call the client and say, hi, uh, Mr. Jones, Mrs. Smith, um, you know, Jane, your caregiver called out, do you need a replacement or do you just want to cancel this, the shift for today? You gave them permission to take away your billable hours, especially if this is a short case. You have now created a, a couple of problems. One, you've lost potentially two to four or six, whatever your minimums are, of billable hours for that day. And the other problem that you've created is that you've now created a vacuum in where you're giving the client the opportunity to realize that they don't really need your help at all. Hey, you know, I've managed. I, do I really need to pay for the agency to come in this often? This is long-term detrimental, and this is why you want to present it in the way I discussed before. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Jones or Mr. Smith. Your caregiver called out. We are getting a replacement. They may be a little bit later than your usual start time, but someone will be there. Is, are we okay with that? Or is that okay with you? Okay, so now the way we phrase the question, we said the same thing both times. But now instead of saying, hey, I'm being lazy and don't want to go through the effort of finding your replacement, it's okay to cancel and it's okay for you to realize that down the road, you don't need me. I have said, I here's the problem that was presented to me. I'm providing you a, a solution this is what our expectation is of you because you hired us as an agency and we're going to make sure you have the care you need. Is that all right? See, we went from finding a way to cop out to providing a solution to a problem and fulfilling our promise of going above and beyond. That is scenario number one. The next way to address the issue of, of constant call outs is uh, in, in all honesty, if you, if you know that a particular caregiver has a habit of calling out or there are circumstances that there is a likelihood of calling out, plan ahead. It, it's that simple, especially if we have a, a new client, like a client that's been with you for under 30 days, plan ahead. You call caregiver number one. Hey, caregiver number one, I have a case, blah, blah, blah. This is that's when it's starting. And then I'm going to call caregiver number two and say, hey, listen, I need you to be on standby. Okay. This way, if caregiver number one tells you they cannot make it or if they cannot 
do this or if they can't be there for whatever reason or if the, they're late, you have caregiver number two that is going to be ready and able to go on short notice. Okay, that's solution number two. Solution number three is one that tends to aggravate the coordinator staff, but here's the thing. You know, here's, here's where it comes down to. Every shift, shifts generally run certain times. They usually begin at like seven in the morning, eight in the morning for early morning. Then some will, you know, begin like between 10 and noon for like the midday shifts. And then between three and five, you have your evening shift starts. And then around six to 10 p.m., you'll have your overnight shifts beginning. We know this. This is typical. This is everywhere. This is not something that only happens in the Northeast. This is your average start times for your shifts. So if we know this. Your coordinators, your schedulers, they need to start picking up the phone and calling all the caregivers on a daily basis, no matter how annoying this may be, and verify that this caregiver intends to show up. Hey, Sally, um, you have a shift beginning at 5 p.m. today. We just wanna make sure that you're gonna be there and that, and if there's any other issues on hand. This is, per, this is annoying, as I said, and, and it seems like micromanagement, but I, I promise you, you're gonna get a little pushback in the beginning and you're gonna hear a lot. I know my job, I know when I have to be there. I'm responsible, that's great. But once it becomes a routine, the aggravation will stop. But also it creates an accountability factor that now you will never have to hear, I didn't know my time my shift started. I didn't know I had a shift. Oh, I forgot I had to be there over the weekend. This is when it's most important, weekends, holidays. When school is out, we all know the routine. School is out, all of a sudden we can't do it. Certain times of the year, depending on where you live, you're gonna get um, caregivers telling you, oh, for the next six weeks, I can only work 12 hours a week because sometimes they receive certain benefits from the state and they wanna make sure they're within the income thresholds to maintain that those are needs. This is what we're doing. So if we have constant and consistent communication and follow-up with our caregivers, we will reduce the likelihood of unexpected call-outs. And if they do happen, we will also be better prepared to cover these cases. This has been your 10 minute home care training. Thank you again for watching. Don't forget, once again, please give this video a thumbs up if you found some value in it. And also uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already. Thank you and until next time.